so hello everyone welcome to another significant milestone in terms of clinical research history yes today we are going to talk about the belmont report it is one of the most significant historical event in terms of ethical consideration in clinical trials you all might have heard the words respect beneficence and justice these were the three pillars which laid the foundation of ethical conduct of the clinical trial let's understand today what exactly this report is and what are the ethical consideration that have made a significant impact in how we conduct clinical trials today let's start so in this particular session we are going to understand what exactly is the belmont report then we will see the ethical principle that came out of the report followed by the exact meaning of the word respect for persons beneficence and justice and how this belmont report had led to application in today when we conduct clinical trial so let's start so when it comes to belmont report so it is the report which was released in the year 1978 and was created by national commission for protection of human subjects of biomedical and behavioral research and this particular report was a direct correlation by various ethical consideration or ethical disparity that have presided before the year 1978 in 1932 to 72 we saw the tuskegee syphilis study so i have made a video you can refer to that in that particular event we have seen that how racial discrimination was done how ethical issues were not dealt with followed by there was a need to make a law and for that a very impactful report need to be created now the national commission for protection of human subjects for biomedical and behavioral research was formulated and they conducted extensive research and they thought about how this can be converted into legislation and national research act so they conducted the research from 74 to 78 and formulated into that law and on september 30 1978 the commission's report were released and there the ethical principle and the guidelines for the protection of human uh, research subject was released and it was directly published in the Fe federal register on april 18 1979 okay okay and this particular legislation has also been incorporated into 45 cfr part 46 and this has laid a foundation for ethical consideration and how the ethical principle can be applied for the protection of human subject when it comes to biomedical and behavioral research so this is the belmont report now after the belmont report was released three fundamental ethical principle was laid over and this were first one was respect for persons second was the beneficence and third was the justice system now let us understand these one by one and understand exactly how these three principle have laid a foundation of ethical consideration when it comes to conduct of the clinical trial now let us see the first principle that is respect for person so respect for person means that treating the individuals or the clinical trial participant as autonomous person who are capable of choosing for themselves earlier in tuskegee syphilis study or other nuremberg uh, trials we were seen that they were not given the right to choose for themselves and not treated as autonomous so in this particular uh, report it was mentioned that every person should be respected and to be treated as an autonomous body and they should be given the right to choose for themselves whether to participate or not or whether to withdraw from the trial in in the middle also and in this uh, case for respect for person uh, they need to have uh, autonomy and even to the extent that they might not be harm okay so the subject if they feel that they are in any imminent harm or they feel that they do not want to participate in the trial then they should be treated as autonomous and the extent of protection from this report would also depend on the nature of potential risk and harm to the livelihood 
or likelihood of the benefit which means that if the potential harm is more than the benefit then we have to consider this particular subject safety and we have to withdraw this subject from the clinical trial or we need to think about what particular patient population are we going to include in this particular trial the application of this principle also involves in the process of informed consent okay where all the comprehensive information need to be given to the subject and they should be voluntarily be able to participate in the study and give their decision and subject population they might be vulnerable and these vulnerable population can not only be a man and a woman but they can also include any live human fetuses in pregnant women they can be children who can be easily coerced they can be prisoners who are under the protection of the law in the prison so you cannot do unethical exp experimentation on the prisoner just because they are not able to live their life freely as well as there are mentally disabled people and people with severe illness so all these categories of potentially risky population or vulnerable population they need to be respected and if and only if they are able to provide voluntary informed consent then you are able to take them in the trial so respect of person means that the autonomy should be protected as well as the principle of informed consent where the subject voluntarily participates in the trial that needs to be respected so that is respect for person next principle would be beneficence beneficence means that if we assess a participant then what are the potential risk versus what are the anticipated benefit that needs to be decided by the healthcare professional and always the beneficence or the potential benefit should justify the risk okay so all the investigators or the study doctors are required to devise mechanism which can maximize the benefit and reduce the harm involved in clinical trial for example a particular participant is undergoing a treatment which is a molecule which has serious adverse event but those adverse event should not be that much harmful to the subject which does not justify the benefit itself okay so the principle of beneficence has to be taken care of and also in terms of uh, public opinion we have to take cognizance that the risk and the benefit may result from the novel medicinal product there will be certain risk involved okay that they can be a medical psychological social uh, procedure so we need to take care of that also okay so when it when it comes to benefit it does not mean only physical or uh, pharmacogenetic uh, benefit but we mean that those particular benefits should also not harm any person's social life any psychological harm that could happen to them and when we design the clinical trial itself we need to think comprehensively of the risk and benefit and we must examine carefully before we get that particular protocol approved and we need to find out also the alternative methods where the benefits can be sought from this particular clinical trial so that is the principle of beneficence Now let us understand what exactly the principle of justice means. So when it comes to justice, it means that all the people who are involved in the clinical trial has to be treated justly and a fair distribution of risk and benefit should be involved in the clinical trial, which means that the vulnerable population who is going to uh, participate in the clinical trial for example it can be economically disadvantaged subject or subject with limited uh, cognizance or uh, they can be any students or any children which can be easily manipulated so we need to ensure that whenever someone participates in clinical trial they are fairly treated all the treatment and the placebo are distributed randomly and it does not have any bias when it comes to allocation of the treatment or participation in the clinical trial just because someone is poor or economically disadvantaged or someone who is a student or someone who is a minor so we should not take advantage of the situation and we should treat everyone justly when it comes to participation of the clinical trial that is the principle of justice and this principle requires the researchers to verify whether the potential uh, subject pool is appropriate for this research and the recruitment of the study participant 
is fair and impartial there should not be any particular partiality when it comes to participation in the study and this uh, principle of justice has also been adopted by the us congress uh, department of health and education and welfare and this belmont report essentially laid ethical framework for protecting human subject and the guidelines impacted by the regulation and this particular uh, principle it is essential to refer the document which is approved by the institutional review board so whenever you submit documents to the ethics committee ethics committee will not care that much about the molecule and its effect but they will care about how many blood draws are involved how many subject visit are involved do are we taking more blood samples or uh, is the subject mean harm more or is the subject having any ethical consideration so when it comes to ethical consideration when it comes to thinking about the view of the subject there the institutional review board are taking more cognizance and this is because of the ethical framework laid down by the belmont report so these were the principle of beneficence justice and respect for person so now let us understand what are the applications of the belmont report what did we get after the belmont report so first and foremost is the informed consent the concept of income informed consent and the ethical requirement and the legal requirement of informed consent was in direct correlation of the belmont report so whatever the informed consent we have today it has taken its root from that report second thing is when it comes to subject selection of the clinical trial we are more vigilant now and this is because of the ethical framework laid down by the belmont report then when we assess the risk and benefit of the study participant the risk benefit assessment that also takes cognizance of the belmont report okay and when it comes to regulatory integration of the ethical concern the ethical guidelines that are given by the regulatory to the institutional review board or the ethics committee so that integration has also been directly impacted by the belmont report and finally when it comes to medical ethics and awareness to the public this report has also laid a significant milestone when it comes to having medical ethics and awareness in terms of general public so when anyone ask you what are the application of the belmont report then these five are the most significant application of the belmont report so i hope uh, i was able to help you understanding the belmont report and thank you for watching this video till the end uh, make sure you like share and subscribe to our channel so that we can reach wider audience and help them in progressing their career as well as spreading awareness about clinical research and thank you for watching this video